Hey everybody, Jackson Galaxy, your cat daddy, here today to talk about a really serious subject, and that is stress. What does it look like when our cats are stressed? How do they manifest it? That's what we're here to talk about today. Cats are almost programmed to hide their pain, to be very stoic, whether that is physical pain or whether that's emotional or mental pain. And believe it or not, you know just as well as I do a lot of times when your cat is stressed only because you notice they're doing something they haven't done before. They're doing something that's just a little off, a little different because you spend so much time with your cats at home. Now, before I start anything, I want you to remember Remember the one golden rule. If your cat is doing something they have never done before, go to the vet, have them run tests, and just make sure that your cat isn't acting out because they're in pain. That can always cause the kind of behaviors that we, we're gonna be talking about. There are three surefire angles to take a look at when trying to identify stress in your cat, starting with the aforementioned, the physical manifestation. Now, this can go in two different ways. It can be my body hurts, something's going on in my body and I'm acting out. The other way around is something's happening in my home and I'm acting out and it's manifesting physically because that does happen many times in cats. So for instance, if your cat has lived peacefully without ever over grooming in their life and suddenly it's like a freshly manicured lawn on their belly, between their legs, anywhere, that lets you know that something is going on. Now that can be allergies, but it can be stress as well, so look out for that. But other things like excessive vomiting or diarrhea, these are things that also can be exacerbated at the least from stress in your home. I have seen stress play a part in feline lower urinary tract disorders, problems like irritable bowel syndrome, which has become sort of a catch-all when, when something is happening digestively to a cat that we can't explain. But a lot of times stress plays a part in that as well. It's important for me to keep nailing this point that your cat can have intestinal problems because they have worms or because they, God forbid, have cancer. But but it can be that they've always had a sensitive tummy and in times of stress, boom, things happen. And again, that can be seen in excessive vomiting or diarrhea or the avoidance of food. Suddenly your cat's not eating or on the opposite, they're eating too much, eating too fast and then throwing up what I call the snarf and barf. Snarfing and barfing, if your cat has never done it before and suddenly they're doing it, then clearly they're feeling threatened somehow. They're feeling like I got to do this really quick and then they just throw up. These are your beginnings. This is something that when you see it, you go, ha, huh, better go to the vet. And then the second thing is what's going on around here. Another physical manifestation of stress is what's called a displacement behavior. The best way I can describe displacement behavior is the equivalent of nail biting for humans. You get stressed and that physical displacement is I go like this and I'm, oh, I'm just I'm gnawing at my, rah, 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 you know. People talk about stress eating. That's a displacement behavior. You know where I'm going right now, okay? You chain smokers out there. It's that kind of a behavior. In cats, what you might see is your cat is walking across the floor and suddenly they just stop what they're doing and they just start grooming. They just, you know, dump it, dump it, right? I just stop what I'm doing and I start over grooming. And maybe I'll do that a number of times. If it happens once or twice, that's not a thing. That could be a little speck of dust that landed on your cat's butt. But if it happens on a regular basis, all of a sudden you're noticing that your cat is walking and then suddenly over grooming. Or their grooming takes on a much more determined vibe to it. In reality, I mean, grooming should be, and we witness it to be, a very languid behavior in cats. So when you think of a displacement, it's I'm grooming because I want to get to that place not because I am in that place. And that's a displacement behavior. So again, this is about your eagle eyes. This is about your detectivism to notice these physical signs uh, that your cat is stressed out. The second pillar that holds up the house of cat stress would be territorial stress. Now, whether that is stress because of something that is happening in the home or something that is happening outside the home, feral cats outside who are feeding near your home and making life miserable for your indoor cats, or whether it's something that's happening inside the home, changes specifically that, that happen inside the home, that's our territorial stress. I feel good when I feel like I own everything, and I feel threatened and stressed when I feel like my territory is under fire. What are some of the symptoms of this territorial stress that you might see? Well, start looking at the most territorially significant areas. When it comes to fear of something that's happening outside the house, the most common thing that I will see is what we call perimeter marking. 
So that's peeing underneath windows, on doors, under doors, any doorway whatsoever, any place where they could be saying, all right, there are the barbarians at the gate. They're coming. This is the Alamo. And so I have to pee around the perimeter of the Alamo to keep those guys away, to let them know in the most desperate way possible, this belongs to me. This is not yours. Get off my lawn for the 20th time. Some cats are what I call Napoleon cats. They are prone to tr sort of over-owning things. And so they will do that on and off in their life. But for a cat that has never shown this kind of stress before, the first place that you guys ought to be looking is outside your window, outside your doors. I, I've seen these kind of behaviors kick up in the springtime when it's kitten season. So that means there's more intact toms and intact queens outside. They're putting off those pheromones. They're peeing all over the place. They're caterwauling. Let's see if I can do a caterwaul here. Ah! making all kinds of fighting noises, and your cats know that it's happening. I've also seen it happen uh, because of raccoons, because of skunks, because of all kinds of wildlife. But really, at the end of the day, it's about getting those cats or whatever other critters there are away from that barrier, away from that territorial wall so that uh, your cats can breathe again. For instance, if you're feeding feral cats, all the power to you, as long as you are doing TNR, trap, to return, as long as you are feeding your ferals, just move that feeding line far away from your home. Take that feeding station and move it. As long as your cats can smell those other cats, they have a very high chance of being stressed out by them. Likewise, we might see cats start hiding because of the stress of what's going on outside the house. Not all cats are going to take that step and mark the perimeter. They may just hide under the bed. They may just avoid the windows. Your cat who is just always watching cat TV out the window, watching the birds, suddenly is not. Suddenly is under the bed, in the closet. That can be a manifestation of a threat that they feel unable and unequipped to handle. So they're just gonna hide and ride the storm out wherever is nice and quiet. Suddenly you walk up to your cat sitting in the window and you go to pet them and they're like, what the? And they turn around, they bite you, and they turn around, they run away. And you're sitting there going, why did my cat bite me? Why did this happen? Why why do you hate me? And your cat was just totally freaked out because what they're thinking is, I'm on duty right now. I am scanning the horizon with my little cat telescope, looking at all of the threats that are facing us outside in the world. And suddenly out of nowhere, somebody comes up to you and goes, hey guy, what are you gonna do? You know, so just one little takeaway from that also, please don't take it personally. Please remember that whatever they're doing is reflecting stress or anxiety usually. The third thing to think about is also avoidance of those areas. Any place where there's a window, where there's a door, just imagine that that is your cat at their most exposed. And of course, the biggest territorial manifestation of stress that you're going to see is when the territory changes, when you move. Moving is an incredibly stressful event in humans. Moving is the second most stressful thing that we go through, second only to a death in the family. Yikes! But in cats, because they define their sanctity, their safety, their mojo by the ownership of their territory, when we move that territory, they are going to stress. One way or another, unless your cat is the biggest mojito cat on the planet, they're going to stress about moving from one place to the next. So check out this video right here about establishing base camp, and that is the best way to get your cat all mojo-fied as they hit that new territory. Another thing that you might see is an over-ownership of space that is territorially really important uh, when it comes to the other people or animals in the house. So for instance, in good times, a cat will come up to a, an area and maybe they will scratch a little bit on it. Maybe they will rub against it. Maybe they will headbutt it. They'll put their scent on those areas like the arm of a couch or a chair just to say, hey, you and me, we own this together. We're compadres. We are the co-owners of this home. But when they start going crazy about it because in this case, they feel a threat from without, then they're going to start over scratching. All of a sudden your couch is shredded and you may find that they're peeing on the cushion of the couch, on your bed itself. This is a red flag. Your cat is reacting to what's going on outside the house with such fervor that they forget all sort of etiquette and they just go to what they are sure will work right, in terms of claiming that space. So the final pillar here in the house that cat stress built would be what I call the relational manifestation. Again, we talked about the physical, we talked about the territory itself, changes in the territory, threats from without, and the threat of the change of the territory itself. This one is about, well, 
relations. So a good example of sort of a relational dynamic that is causing your cat stress is separation anxiety. Uh, and this is a perfect time to be talking about this, you guys, because we have spent more time at home in 2020 than we have spent at home before. I think we can all testify to that one way or another. But there comes a point for a lot of us when we start to go back to work, hopefully for all you guys. And when we start to go back to work, our cats start acting out. Wait a minute, I was used to you being around. I was actually gleaning confidence from your constant presence in this house and from the fact that we had this rhythm and this rhythm went on every day the way I knew it. It would, it was predictable, and suddenly you're gone. We have seen cats act out in ways like peeing and pooping on a bed. Because again, this is that place for us. This is that holy place. And I want to make sure that my scent is as strong here as humanly or animalistically possible because I don't know when you're coming back, you know? Long hours alone when, when they weren't used to it. That's a real prime suspect here when it comes stressing cats from a relational perspective. Another thing to look at is if you've added in a new animal or human family member uh, over the last couple of months and now you're noticing any of these symptoms that I've talked about before. Let's say that you've just introduced a, a new cat family member and suddenly your cat is getting aggressive or they're not using their litter box or they're vomiting or they have diarrhea, snarfing and barfing, all of the things that I have talked about before. There's your, there's your suspect right there, and that's the newcomer. It tells you you need to back up. Do the introduction the right way. Take a look at this video right here about introducing cat to cat. But what we sometimes don't think about is when suddenly there's a new boyfriend or girlfriend or a husband or a wife or a partner or whatever, all of a sudden there's a new grown-up human in the picture. That human takes up territory, and your cat, if they're feeling insecure about that, that's how they'll manifest their stress. Suddenly, must I say it again, peeing, pooping, vomiting, eating not much, overeating, over grooming, uh, all of the things that I have discussed already. Again, you gotta look at the genesis. If your cat didn't do it all the time, now they're doing it, now we know why. So humans coming into the picture, the birth of babies. Man, let me just testify right now. If you don't prepare your cat for the arrival of a child. This is how things roll downhill, right? We have a new arrival in the home. That new arrival comes with unfamiliar cries and smells and sounds. And as we go to explore and we get a little scared of it because we've never seen it before, uh, maybe we'll do something like we'll have a mistake in the nursery. Now we're being shut out of the nursery. Now our territory is getting smaller and that thing, that thing that makes that sound and those smells is a bad thing. Do yourselves a favor, whether it is a cat, a dog, a baby, a grown up, a ferret, a, a, you know, I don't know, a pot belly pig, I don't care what it is that comes into your home, do the introduction right. Prepare your cat. Let them know that this is about sharing space and good things happen from sharing space, not bad things. Another thing to look out for is, especially again, in a multi-cat household, if you're not providing your cats enough in terms of territorial resources, and that's catification, bedding and cat trees, vertical stations around the home, cat superhighways, if you're not giving them enough places to go, then you might start seeing that, th that they're going to start stressing about their ownership of that territory and start fighting with the other cats. That's why you always heard me say on, on my show all these years, build shelves, vertical world, get them up, you know, because that's the first place I'm gonna go to disperse that sort of stress is to just give them more places in the world to get to. When it comes to cats and dogs, one surefire way to stress out a cat is to let your dog just go. Because let me tell you something, and being a guy who has seven cats and three dogs, I've seen plenty of this. A lot of dogs just love to get into a litter box. And a lot of times they invade that space where a cat's still in there. Or when a cat's just getting out of there and the dog rushes in, that's gonna cause stress, believe me. You know, one of those things that cats need to do is be able to go and use the litter box without the threat of being either attacked or in this case, case, you know, having a dog nose in there next to you. Dogs that are not trained whatsoever around cats is a constant problem. It's just incumbent upon you as a dog guardian to make sure that your cats can walk across the room and not be chased by a dog. And then of course there is the sanctity of the litter box. So just again, if you want to forestall relationship problems and the stress that it induces in cats, make sure if you say stop, they stop and make sure they know also that they shouldn't start in the first place.
Those are the three pillars of the house that Cat Stress built. We have the physical manifestations, the territorial manifestations, and the relational manifestations. Of course, all of these things are kind of fluid, right? One feeds into the other, feeds into the other. Like I said before, a cat can feel sick and then they express things like hiding or aggression because they don't feel well. Likewise, they could be feeling something territorially threatening to them and then they will attack or pee or throw up or or get sick. All of these things can happen because they're stressed by a relation or the territory. You see what I'm saying? What is the common thread in terms of your diagnosis is your ability to step away. The thing that I can bring to your home that oftentimes you can't bring to your own home is that I don't have the attachment to the story itself. I don't have that emotional reaction to what's happening. Your cat pees on your bed, you're gonna get mad. I'm gonna look at it as a clue. So the best thing that you can do is just try. And I know it's not easy, you guys, but if you're seeing something in your cat that they've never done before, and that could be what you perceive to be destructive behavior, that's your moment to step back out of that storyline and remember one thing, this is a manifestation of my cat's stress. This is a manifestation of my cat not feeling well, of my cat to some degree or another suffering. And that's where we gotta come at it from. Put yourself in their paws for a second and remember that you are there as their guardian. And guys, I'm saying this loudly because I know it's a tough task. I know that you see your cat as a family member and as a friend, and when your friend pees in your bed or in your gym shoes, it's hard to back up and take that step. But I'm asking you for the good of not just your relationship, but your cat's well being, try to take that step. If it's something that makes you go, huh, what was that? That's your clue that something is happening outside of your cat to make your cat feel like something is not safe. So that's, you know, when you start to take action. And finally, you guys, again, I've talked about this a million times as well. Play with your cat. Play is not just about having fun, which of course it is, but it's also about releasing energy out of their system. In another example, another video that I made about life during the COVID quarantines, I talked about the fact that we are now inhabiting our home, all of us, at all the same time. So now the cats are not the only ones that are home. Now everyone's home. The kids are home from school, you're home from work, everyone's home. And your cats start manifesting those stress behaviors. Suddenly, I don't know why, but my cat just peed uh, in the middle of the room. All of these humans and all these cats are putting out energy, bouncing off the walls, energy, energy, energy. Your cat's like, oh, I'm, I, it's just a balloon. I'm just filling full of this energy. That's what cats do. And that energy has to come out. And you don't want the balloon to pop because the balloon a lot of times has pee in it or aggression in it. So how do we bring that balloon back down? We play with our cats and we do it on a really structured basis. So your cat's body knows that I arc up, but the play brings me back down again. I arc up and it brings me back down again. Another sort of cure for this is making sure that you're adhering to what I call the three R's. And the three R's are routine, ritual, rhythm. The more we repeat uh, activities every day, day in and day out, and that a lot of times is about play and it's about feeding and it's about when we leave the house and when we come back and what we do with each other and with our cats, we create rhythm routine and then we repeat that routine it becomes a ritual we're invested in it and then that becomes the rhythm of our life and cats are slaves to the rhythm as we all are nobody likes anarchy but for cats territorial sanctity is really about that rhythm i want today to look like yesterday and i want yesterday to look like tomorrow all right you guys those are the three ways to look at cat stress and what i ask you to do is look at it. Look at it as an observer. Try to look at it as me coming into your home. Like I said before, I know that's not easy, but think about the alternative and that's a stressed out cat who's gonna do damage to you, to your home, to the other cats, to you know your Aunt Edna who comes and visits everybody. So let's not let that happen, all right, you guys? Thank you for watching this video because this means you care enough about your cat family members to do something about their stress. So thank you for that. On behalf of all the cats, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to make sure you get these little belly notifications here because then the next time I have a video like this that is for the good of your cat, you will get that alert. All right, you guys, until next time, let me know what other kind of videos you want to see in the uh, comments, and we will talk again. That's a promise. All light and all love and all mojo to you. Meow. <sighs> yeah.